Hello and welcome to This Week in Big Sky Football. I'm Carl Hunt and today our guests include Idaho head coach Paul Petrino, Northern Arizona quarterback Case Cookus, and stats Craig Haley. Let's take a look back at some highlights from this past weekend. Idaho top top 25 Eastern Washington 35-27 in the Root Sports Game of the Week. Montana State picked up their third non-conference win with a 56-21 victory over Norfolk State. Portland State defeated Eastern Oregon 59-9. And Montana collected a 47-27 win against Monmouth at home. The Big Sky has five teams in the FCS Top 25 polls. In the Stats FCS poll, UC Davis, Weber State, Montana State, Montana, Eastern Washington are all ranked with the Aggies leading the way at number four. In addition, four additional teams are receiving votes across both polls. Big Sky Root Sports Offensive Player of the Week honors went to Montana quarterback Dalton Sneed. Idaho linebacker Charles Ocano was named the Defensive Player of the Week honoree, while Montana's Malik Flowers earned Special Team Weekly honors. Remember, Root Sports is the official television partner of the Big Sky Conference. The league will play its final Big Sky Missouri Valley Challenge Series game this weekend when Weber State hosts Northern Iowa. The MVFC clinched the series last weekend with a 6-3 edge. When we return, Idaho head coach Paul Petrina will join us on the show. Stay tuned to this week in Big Sky Football. Big Sky Men's and Women's Basketball Championships are headed to Boise. Buy your tickets now for a fun-filled week with basketball for all to enjoy. Purchase your tickets today by visiting BigSkyInBoise.com. That's BigSkyInBoise.com. We would like to welcome Idaho head coach Paul Petrino to our show today. Coach, welcome and congrats on your win against Eastern Washington. Thank you. Appreciate having me on. Your Vandals came out really strong against Eastern Washington and didn't let up. What did you tell your team at halftime and then after the game? Um, you know, at halftime, we just said, you know, we got we still got 30 minutes left. We know they're an explosive team, so we just got to keep keep playing hard, keep playing tough offensively, make sure we stay on the field and, and have good long drives. We had a good long drive in the first half, and then we got a field goal block. But the long drive in the second half for the touchdown, that was that kind of sealed it and that was two drives, both over 11 plays. So uh, I think our guys did a good job, went out and played hard. Now, linebacker Charles O'Connor was named the Big Sky and Stats FCS National Defensive Player of the Week. How nice was it to have him recognized after such a hard-fought game against a ranked team? Yeah, it was really good. Charles played a great game. He uh, did a great job putting pressure on the quarterback, made a lot of plays on the run. Broke up three passes, just kind of flew around, played really good. And Trey Walker really played about every bit as good, too. Those two both had outstanding games. Now, this is your second season in the Big Sky since Idaho's return last year. How would you describe the amount of talent that this league has? Oh, there's a lot of talent. You know, it's it's been a great league forever, all the way back since, you know, 30 years ago when I was an assistant in it. So there's, it's always been one of the best leagues there is. There's always great coaching, all kinds of talent on offense, always good quarterbacks, good receivers. Um, it's just, it's a, it's the, the best league there is out there, and, you know, at this division, that's for sure. Now, when it comes to non conference play, what's the key to getting FCS games at home? Um, it's hard, you know, it's, you just gotta, you gotta work on it. A lot of that stuff scheduled way ahead of time. You know, we're still playing two big teams every year, which nobody else in the league really does much of. So we still have to go to Penn State, go to Wyoming. Um, so that we had an opening at home. Um, we, you know, I'll be honest, I was pushing for some other teams to come in here, but, uh, the people above me, Eastern was the best was the best thing for the school in the area for draw of crowd and, and everything else. And so we did a really good job working hard on them all off season. We're prepared. Our guys went out and played well. And your son was, um, Mason was just named the starting quarterback for the Vandals. What has the experience been like to be able to coach your son? Uh, it's, it's a great experience. You know, I get to, to see him every day, be around him every day. As a coach's kid, you don't, you know, usually you, uh, say goodbye to him on Sunday morning and then you see him Thursday night you know you don't really see him much during the week so uh during the football season so that part of it's been really nice um you know he's playing real well right now that makes it even better did you have a influence in him and were you coaching him at a younger age when he was like in peewee and little league and coming up or were you just kind yeah. of more that supporting father role no, that's kind of our hobby at our house. We go play sports. That's what we do. A lot of people, their dads, you know, they go fishing or hunting, uh, but we just go play sports. So 
him and his twin sister and his little sister. That's just kind of what we do. When he was really young, growing up, actually, we thought he was going to be a soccer player. And if we would have stayed living in a couple of places that we lived when he was younger, he probably would have been. Um, he was on some great club soccer teams in Louisville and in Atlanta. Um, but just as as he got older and older, uh, I think it his passion for the game grew, and then he kind of realized that you know he wants to be a coach when he gets older. So that was the best track to take. Now, Idaho has produced quite a few NFL players, uh, including most recently Katie Ellis. Uh, what has it been like to be able to be an uh, to have like an all around player like him on your team, and now for you able to be able to see him continue his career in the professional ranks? Yeah, it was great to see Caden go on. You know, um, Caden is an unbelievable football player and really even a better person. So um, he, he's very talented. He's going to be successful in, in playing football. He'll be successful when he's done football just because he's a hard worker and an overachiever and, and a great man. All right. Well, thanks for joining us on our show today, Coach. Good luck in your game at Northern Colorado this Saturday. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Yep. Thank you. We'll be back shortly with the next segment of This Week in Big Sky Football. Pluto TV is your one-stop shop for Big Sky action. The leading free internet television service in America will stream live sporting events, including up to 700 football, men's and women's basketball, volleyball, and selected soccer, softball, and track and field events. Simply go to Pluto TV to find games from several different sports. Pluto TV is your one-stop shop for all Big Sky action. Next up on this week in Big Sky football is Northern Arizona quarterback Case Cookis. Thanks for joining us on the show today. Thanks for having me. Case, you're definitely the veteran quarterback of the league. You've been to three football kickoffs. What's it been like to be able to beat so many different players from other teams? Um, you know, I think uh, being in the kickoffs is always fun. Uh, meeting some of the guys, uh, creating some friendships um, and connections throughout the league. Uh, all, all the teams are really good. I just, just love being a part of the big sky. Now, many people don't know how you ended up at Northern Arizona. Can you kind of tell the fans the short version of your story? Yeah, it's. Uh, I'll try to give the short version. It's kind of a long story, but I uh, wasn't recruited very highly out of high school. I uh, decided to go to junior college, um, gray shirted at junior college. And uh, uh, from there, I kind of sent out my spring ball film uh, to get my name out, plan, planning to play at the junior college for one year and then transfer out. Um, and before I was able to even play a year, uh, Northern Arizona called me uh, the summer, which was the 2015 season. Um, and uh, they had me kind of come out to a camp, throw the ball around, and they offered me, and I think it was two, three weeks later, I was up at, at camp working out with the guys. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> that, crazy. That's a great story. Uh, so take us back to your freshman season that ended with you being named the Stats FCS National Freshman of the Year, the CFPA Outstanding Performer of the Year, and a Jerry Rice Award winner. What was that like? You know, I think uh, a little surreal, you know, it's, it's hard as a freshman – you come in and, um, and you, you know, you're just trying to find the ropes. Uh, but what, what I was lucky to have of uh, that freshman year, um, you know, a great support staff, but also um, a lot of seniors and a lot of veteran guys around me to help me through that process. So, you know, I had a uh, senior tight end, senior running back, a couple senior receivers, Emmanuel Butler, Elijah Marsh, all these guys that were huge playmakers. So for me, it was easy to find that role. Um, and the accolades on top of it were just kind of the cherry on top uh, and awesome. But, for me, uh, you know, I, I wanted to finish that year with a, a Big Sky Championship, so I've just been looking for that that last uh, little trophy to put on my shelf. You've had quite a few stellar games during your career at NAU. Which one stands out to you due to a special moment for you or for your team? Um. Oh, man. Um, I think, so, Northern Colorado, my freshman year, um, was a really cool one. Uh, through, I threw seven touchdowns. Um, it was just a, a game where we had a lot of, we were able to have a lot of fun, uh, but we were also executing the game plan really well. Um, I think my first ever win against Stephen F. Austin is something I'll remember forever. Um, I honestly didn't play that well, but um, like I mentioned before, Emmanuel Butler made some, some great catches for me, uh, and we got that win down in Texas. So that, that was a really cool uh, thing to be able to get that first college win under my belt as well. You had to battle a few injuries in your career. You know, a lot of players do. Um, and your arm this year looks as good as it's ever been. 
Have you had to change your game since your injuries or have you just been able to rehab to get back to where you needed to be? You know, I think uh, because it was my throwing shoulder, um, there's, there's a, there was always a worry that I'd have to just completely change the, my throwing motion and the way, the way I did things. But uh, thanks to the su- support staff we have here, uh, and that includes the, the weight staff um, and, and all the athletic trainers, uh, even the coaches as well, just finding programs for me to keep my arm healthy, but also uh, watching, watching pitch counts, you know, how many balls I'm throwing a day. Um, so it just, just everyone really worked together. Um, and I don't think there was one thing that really stood out for, for me getting back to normal, but it was just a really group effort. And I'm so thankful uh, for all the help I had here because it was, uh, you know, you, you break your collar on twice and you, as a quarterback, you don't think you're going to be able to throw a ball again. So uh, being able to get back and I'm just, just happy to be able to throw and play out with the guys. So how did you end up becoming a quarterback? What made you want to kind of gravitate to that position? Um, so uh, I think it, for me, I love the challenge uh, of learning something new every day. Um, and I think as a quarterback, you can never know it all. So there's always something you can work on. Um, and even after the successful seasons I've had, I've always looked back and said, man, I could have got better at my footwork or I missed this and this throw or I, I made too many mistakes in this game. And there's always things you can improve on because you're never going to be perfect, um, although you're trying to strive for those perfect games. Uh, but there's always something to work on, always something to learn. Um, it's really awesome. Is there a specific quarterback that you try to model your game after? Um, I, I don't think there's a specific quarterback. I think you can you can take lessons uh, from each guy. Um, you know, you watch uh, Brady do things with, with the way he, you know, he's not throwing the ball deep down the field. Um, you know, he's taking what's given to him. Um, Rodgers, his playmaking ability. All these guys uh, have a, a little bit of, uh, you know, explosion and something that makes their game special. And, and for me, you just have to, to pick and choose from that. And, and I guess <laughs> for me, um, I guess I try, try to lean towards Brady and, and try <laughs> trying to get those check downs, get completions, and, and be efficient in my, my throws. But um, overall, I don't know if there's one specific guy, but I guess I, guess I, I could say Brady. <laughs> All right. Uh, this season – your wide receiver group looks a lot different than it has in years past. As a quarterback, how easy or hard is it for you to adapt to the different types of receivers that you see every year? Um, you know, I think um, lose, losing a manual, I think, is the biggest change. Um, you know, we don't really have that big body guy because uh, due to some injuries we ended up having this year, uh, which is unfortunate. But I think overall we have a really good core of guys. Um, that do their job, which is awesome to have, um, you know, Hendricks, Johnson, uh, Brandon Porter, Stacy, you know, all, all those guys are out there making plays. And, and yeah, they might not be the, the 6'3", uh, you know, superstar guy, but they're all getting touches. And, and our offense is being run more like it was supposed to be run. Our running backs are getting touches. Tight ends are getting catches. All the wideouts are getting catches. So you really can't focus in on one guy. Uh, and it's been a fun offense to operate in. Now, Montana State is known for having a large crowd. Um, and they're very loud as well. How do you stay in the zone in games like that where it may be hard to hear due to the fans? Yeah, you know, you, you make a few adjustments, you know, make sure the line gets the calls and everything like that. Uh, but for the most part, you know, we got a lot of signals down. Um, you know, all, all our guys are locked in, and it's it's not letting letting the crowd get to you. You know, it's going to get loud on third down. We get close to the red zone when we're backed up. We, we know that. You know, they got a great crowd out there. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to play up there uh, at Montana State yet, so I'm excited to get up there. Um, but overall, you, you can't worry about the, you know, the things you can't control. Just control what, uh, you know, what we're doing on offense. All right, that's Northern Arizona quarterback Case Cookus. The Lumberjacks play at Montana State this Saturday at Bobcat Stadium. Thanks for joining us on the show, and good luck this weekend. Thank you, Priest. Thanks for having me. Need a hotel for work or just a night away? With over 50 hotels open and more on the way, we want to be your home away from home. My Place Hotels is proud to be the official hotel of the Big Sky Conference. It's time for the one and only Craig Haley from Stats to join us on our show. If the rest of the season is as good as these first few weeks, then our hearts may not be able to make, make it with all the <laughs> excitement. Craig, how are you doing this week? Okay, I, I agree, Carl. There's There's been a lot of you know, down to the wire games, you know, some upsets along the way. I mean, 
we, we wouldn't want it any other way, right? <laughs> exactly. That's what makes football so much so much fun to watch. <laughs> now, you picked Villanova as the team of the week after its overtime win against Townsend. What made that game stand out for you? It, it matched two, you know, 3-0 and teams, and, and Towson was coming off a, a road win at, at Maine, which won the CAA title last year. It's just they slugged each slug back and forth, you know, in a shootout. I mean, you know, uh, Villanova forced overtime late and, and then wound up winning it there. I mean, 52 to 45. I mean, it's just a great game. I mean, Tom Flacco, uh, the Towson quarterback, and, and Jake Mayer of, of UC Davis. I mean, they were considered the two top FCS quarterbacks returning this season, but Villanova's standout, uh, Daniel Smith. I mean, he's a grad transfer from, from Campbell. I mean, he's made a name for himself along the way. He's been tremendous. I mean, he was responsible for six TDs in, in this Towson game. And, I mean, it, it, it was just a back-and-forth kind of shootout. Now, we all saw that Idaho's win over Eastern Washington received honorable, honorable mention. Now, I'm sure Big Sky fans would have liked to have seen that be the winner. Uh, what were your thoughts <laughs> on that? Well, honorable mention's not too shabby. I mean, I think it was one of the bigger top 25 surprises of the season. I mean, especially the, the way the game unfolded in the first half. I mean, we talked about last week that, you know, the Vandals could trouble Eastern game-wise, though. I mean, it was basically a, a tale of two halves here. That's why we sided with, with Villanova and, and, and Towson. It was just a little more close throughout the entire game. Should Big Big Sky fans be worried about what Eastern Washington's 1-3 and three start? Ooh, yes. I mean, I, I think the rest of the season – it's like a playoff for Eastern. I mean, they, they, they don't have a Division One win to date. You know, their defense has struggled. They've had injuries at running back. I mean, to make the playoff, they they have to probably capture the Big Sky's automatic bid or or at least go 7-1 in conference just to get the seven Division One wins. So, yeah, I think it's a little bit of, you know, panic time knowing that you pretty much have to win out more or less. Was North Dakota State versus UC Davis the kind of game you expected it to be last week? You know, Carl, I usually think finesse with the, with the Aggies, especially, you know, with the way they sling the ball around. But they showed a physical side here. I mean, the line of scrimmage is where North Dakota State wins so many of their games, but the Aggies stood right up to them, you know, outgained them in yards. I, you know, as long as they're healthy coming out of this game, it, it's a big-time performance to put on, you know, the Aggies' resume. How about the play of Montana State and Montana? Both programs have really created a solid non-conference resume as we head into league play. True, I, I, they're they're both three and one with you know only a, an FBS loss. It's been a great start. Uh, you know, I, I worry a little about Montana State's early injuries, but they clearly have depth in the running game the way they've gotten it done. And and we know you know Bryce Sturk is is just going crazy up front. You know, a, a terror defensively. Montana, I'd like to see a little more consistency in the run game because you're going to need it in November games. Uh, Marcus Knight you know, has been terrific at times. I mean, you know, they, they kept feeding him the ball last week, so it was, it was a little bit of a difference maker. All in all, just a strong start for both teams. It, it's kind of what, what you want to see because they're just two, you know, national level programs, and it's good when they're both up. Now, although there's been some shakeup in the polls, the Big Sky still has five teams in the top 25 and there's more receiving votes. Overall, have you seen much of a shakeup with teams falling in and out of the polls uh, in previous years? Great question. I mean, it's, it's surprising how little movement there's been compared to last season or, 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 you know, recent years. It's been crazy in recent years. I mean, only five new teams have broken in to the top 25 since the preseason poll. That's not a lot. I mean, usually teams that are ranked 15 to 25 – they can be all over the map, but this year there's been consistency there, especially in head-to-head FCS matchups. Sure, a lot of them have lost to FCS, but you don't get over-penalized there. So I'm impressed with the consistency this year, and, and it's a little different from what we've seen. Now, Saturday was a tough day for the Big Sky, dropping all five of its Challenge Series games uh, versus the Missouri Valley Conference. What do you think happened for those Big Sky teams in those games? Well, the Big Sky, you know, did have four road matchups against not just strong Missouri Valley teams, but Missouri Valley teams that were in the top 15. So you do have to consider that. I mean, you're only one 
your only home team this week was, was Northern Colorado, and, and of course they've been a struggling program. I, I think you, you think off offense with the Big Sky, but the Missouri Valley defense has basically had their way in these matchups this weekend. Not a lot of high-scoring games from, from what we're used to out of the Big Sky, so I, I think that was a difference maker. Weber State returns this week with a home game versus Northern Iowa, the last game in the Challenge Series. How bad do the Wildcats need to win this game to get some momentum heading into league play? <laughs> well, speaking of defensive games, here's one. I mean, you know, it could be a battle of field goals. I, I think Weber does need this one a little more, you know, being one and two, although both are FBS losses. It helps a lot for them to have a bye and to actually beat the home team the week after the bye. That, that's a huge advantage. So I do think Weber wins this. And I do think their offense will begin to get on track more than it has, you know, as we move forward here. Now, the game to watch this week would appear to be Montana at UC Davis. And it's a battle of two top 20 teams. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it, it, you know, it's fun that we're moving in the conference play. I mean, this one, you're right, it does stand out. Um, I, I think I could be persuaded either way who's going to win. I mean, I... I think it's time for the Grizz to win these kind of, you know, statement opportunities, statement games. I also think, you know, the Aggies probably have some aches and pains coming out of the North Dakota State game as, as great as they played. Um, they're the favorite here, the Aggies, but here's your chance if you're the Grizz. I, I think it would go either way. Uh, I'm not sure which way I'm leaning. I'm, I, I might go Grizz. All right. Well, that's Craig Haley of Stats. Thank you, Craig, for joining us. And as always, have a great day. I appreciate it, Carl. Enjoy the weekend. Big Sky fans, make sure you download the Pluto TV app on your smartphone, tablet, or TV and check out our new lineup in the 500s. Northern Arizona at number 7, Montana State. Portland State at Idaho State. And number 9, Northern Iowa at number 5, Weber State. And Cal Poly at Southern Utah can all be watched on Pluto TV this week. The Root Sports Game of the Week features number 18, Montana, at number 4, UC Davis. Kickoff is slated for 1 p.m. Pacific time at UC Davis Health Stadium. The 11 Sports Game of the Week that can be also watched on Pluto TV will showcase Idaho at Northern Colorado. Game time at Nottingham Field is scheduled for 1 p.m. Mountain Time. Thanks again to Idaho head coach Paul Petrino. Northern Arizona quarterback Case Cookus and Stats Craig Haley for joining us on the show today. Enjoy this week in Big Sky Football.